Hello, take a moment, try this problem out, and then press play and we'll solve it together. Okay, it's you can see what it says. It says which binomial? It's these things right here is not a factor of this expression up here. And what we're really using is a combination of the remainder theorem, remainder theorem, and that we're tying that to the factor theorem. And I'll say informally what those things are. So the remainder theorem says that if you are dividing by x minus c. So just look at that form as some x value minus some number. And that's what each of these are. You can think of this first one to see how it fits in this mold as not x plus 2, but x minus negative 2. That's the x minus negative 2 is x minus c. Here, x plus 4 is x minus negative 4. And these are already written in a nice way to see what's going on. So in the first case, c is negative 2, and then c is negative 4, and then here c is 6, and then finally c is 7. So the remainder theorem says if you're dividing by x minus c, then the remainder, that's for remainder, equals p of c. p, this, in this case, this is our dividend p of x, and we basically plug in c for x, and that gives you our remainder. Well, the factor theorem then chimes in and says, well, if, I'll say it this way, fix this. The factor theorem says, well, p and c equals zero if and only if, so that's two f's, um, x minus c is a factor. A factor, look at this handwriting, oh boy of p. Sorry about that. So this basically says, listen, you plug in c, and what you get based on the remainder theorem, that's the remainder, right? And if you plug in c and get a remainder of zero, that means it is a factor. That's all the factor theorem saying, that when the remainder is zero, then you have a factor. So long story short, in these kind of problems, we take these c values, we plug them into this polynomial, and to see what the output is, that's our remainder. So let's first plug in negative 2. So p of negative 2 is going to equal negative 2 cubed. That's negative 8 minus 11 times negative 2 squared. So that's 11 times 4, so 44, plus 16 times x. Fix that. So 16 times negative 2, so minus 32, and then plus 84. And we should see if this is 0, then it's a factor. Negative 8 minus 44 is negative 52, right? It's the same thing as negative 44 minus 8. And then minus 32 is negative 84 plus 84 is 0. Wow. On the first shot, we got it. That's the fact. That's, excuse me, they want not a factor. Pay attention, Sean. So this, they want not a factor. This is a factor. The remainder is 0. So we're going to keep going. Then we're going to plug in p of negative 4. Okay, so if we don't, this 0 means it is a factor, so we want not a factor. So now we have negative 4 cubed. That's negative 64. Minus 11 times 4 squared is 11 times 16, which is 176. And then plus 16 times negative 4, so that's minus 64, and then plus 84. So this is not 0, right? Negative 64, negative 64, it's negative 128. And then this is another negative number added on, negative 176. You add 84, it's not 0. I don't, I don't even need to know exactly what it is. It just know it's not 0. So therefore, this is not a factor of this polynomial. Right? You're getting the remainder right here, and the remainder is not zero. There's something left over. There's some remainder, so it's not a factor. All right, I hope that helped.